Here we go. So we're live recording. Yep, yeah, it's all working. And we're honored to have uh, Sean and Virginia Killingsworth out here with us today. And uh, I just love those guys. You know, we, we go to their church in Jacksonville and it's a beautiful facility on the river overlooking downtown Jacksonville. Just usually when I go, there's a, a creation response and we have a pretty nice light show when I'm there and yeah. dolphins jumping in, dolphins. in the water, you know, just really cool what, what's mm -hmm. happening there. And we always have creation engaging with us in a really powerful way. And I love that. We'll be talking probably some about that, how we become co-creators and partner with creation to help us fulfill our destiny. And uh, so uh, I've been teaching about that for a long time and I linked up with these guys and let me show you her book. I've got her book on here. And uh, she just came out with that book, right? And uh, co-creating through oneness with God. And I call this, this thing about well, recalibration, recalibrate. And what a great day to recalibrate on Yom Kippur, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, 40 days of repentance. And then they had the big thing up on the lawn there at the Washington DC thing, all about repentance. And, and so uh, I just bought this book. I haven't got into it yet, but, but I know it's going to be really, really, really good. And so uh, we all need to get it and you can link up with her how to get that. And so we may share it again here in a little bit. Uh, I've got to watch some reason that I got people to the here tonight. But Sean and Virginia are awesome, and they take me to good places to eat, you know. <laughs> we love hanging out with you, Terry. We love what you walk in. We love what you release. Oh, uh, thank you. We just connect, and Nina, I wish Nina would come. You know, we just all had kind of in the same, and Timothy Vince, we've been there a couple of times with Timothy, and he's doing another webinar on Yom Kippur and Courts of Heaven tonight. And so uh, I was going to ask him to come too, but he's busy. And so uh, we're here and I'm not going to talk long. I, I share this stuff all the time, but I want to hear from, from Sean and Virginia about her book and just share whatever's on your heart. You have freedom and liberty to just do what you do. Uh, if there's any religious spirit, we'll kind of uh, uh, stone them. We'll flog them. Cast it out. Just cast it out. Cast them out. Yeah, we'll remove them from the room. <laughs> In a nice, nice American way. <laughs> Do that. So uh, I just want to turn it over to you guys and share what's on your heart for, for this group. And I love what God is doing through you guys. I love your church. I love attending there. And we really, uh, you know, one just quick thought. We need to become more governmental yeah. in what we're doing. Uh, we see the old church age gradually fading away. In 2012, we actually made the transition from church age to kingdom age. That wasn't a, wasn't really a, uh, just a automatic light switch thing where one age turns off and the other turns on. There's this pr process of transition where we have to learn the language. We have to learn the, uh, uh, you know, we have to change our mindsets, our motives in our heart, and our physical actions, our language. Or as I said before to come into the place where we can begin to be, become governors uh, and co-creating with, with creation. Uh, some of my old webinars, like the one we did uh, last week was sharing a lot about my experiences with creation. And I'll just share this one thing. It's like, you know, Romans eight talks about the manifest sons. Uh, Yahweh said that when a manifest son shows up, it ceases its groaning and begins to rejoice because it's found one who can deliver them from the bondage of corruption. And you have found one who can help you fulfill your destiny. Mm. Isn't that interesting? I love that. Uh, the picture of that is Moses. I won't go into the story about Moses at the Red Sea uh, when creation responded and helped Israel uh, fulfill their destiny. So there's a lot in there that, that we, we're beginning to see the picture uh, you know, Moses was standing, I think Moses at the Red Sea was a picture of the church today. We're appealing to heaven, going, God, help me, save me. And then 
uh, God is appealing to us. Wake up, wake up, understand your identity and your authority. Know who you are, know how you can partner with creation, be a co-creator with me, a legislative and judicial son. And uh, so we can really begin to get things done. So I can go a long time. But, Do it. <laughs> <laughs> but well said. I, we, had her, we had them down in Ocala for the meeting and, and they got up and they left early and I said, oh, I wanted to bring those guys in and have them share some of what we were doing there. That was all about co-creators too. And so you have all night. I have nowhere to go except maybe yeah. barbecue later. Yeah. You must be, never start a webinar hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and go shopping. Yeah, so uh, if you guys don't know them, get her book. If you're in Jacksonville, go visit with them Saturday, right? Saturday nights. And, Saturday nights at seven. Okay, yeah, okay. So whether, whether there's a pandemic, um, it, it will be there. Rain, sleet, or snow. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So you guys just take take it away, and and uh, we love you and bless you and honor you guys and all you have done and continue to do for the body mm -hmm. of Christ. We just bless you, and we lift up our hands to say, God, you just speak to them, mm -hmm. Father, minister to them. We uh, just invite creation to come in and partner with us tonight, uh, the Holy Trinity to come in today and lead every every word that comes out of their mouth and what we do corporately together tonight. We just le release it into your hands, Father, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you, Terry, so much. And we're just real, really honored to be on here. You just, you do walk in so much honor. And I just know that's why Father's continuing to open doors for you. We pray he'll continue doing that. Um, so it's it's really, really a blessing. Did you have anything you wanted to share about um, probably just the one thing that I'm really encouraged as to what's going on right now is, uh, one is, uh, the, the ones that, you know, God is connecting here in the state of Florida. Um, and just, um, thankful for, for you, Terry and Nina, um, you know, for stepping out and just beginning to, uh, just, you know, let God begin to orchestrate just that gathering of the sons in the state of Florida. Because like um, last week we hosted Joseph Sturgeon and I just kind of mentioned to him when we were talking, it's like, I feel like there's been enough revelation released that it's time for us to really start building and doing things with it. Like, and I believe that we are, but it's just, I'm at a place where it's like, I think enough has been released and it's like, it's time to start seeing some fruit and some manifestation of what's been released. I mean, that's really what's in my heart or that expectation of, you know, an example of that would be just the sons that are beginning to gather here in Florida and us beginning to steward the state of Florida in the spirit and beginning to just see the shifts around the state and, and just the kingdom of heaven beginning to come and, and be established um, in, in every facet um, throughout our state. So that's really what I'm looking for, what, you know, what I'm hopeful and excited about as, as where we're at right now with what God's doing and, um, you know, just really encouraged by that because we've been, you know, we've been walking this out for a while and we've been beating our deal with your issues, get your soul healed mm -hmm. for, for <laughs> feels like forever. And, um, you know, and now it's kind of like, I feel like we're at a place where, um, you know, so just another measure of authority, dominion, we can begin to see things really start to shift, not only in our, in our own personal lives and cities, but, but in a broader way in the state and, and ultimately in the nation, you know, so I'm just, I'm really excited for where we're at. And as, in, you know, just the intensity of what's going on is, um, obviously, it's just that challenge of, being able to stay in our seats of rest, just being at rest with everything that's swirling and not getting caught up in the narratives and all the stuff that's out there and just really um, being able to have heaven's perspective and just seeing, uh, you know, what, just knowing what's in God's heart and just being in agreement with him and, and, and just what heaven's wanting to do in the earth right now. So, but it's really exciting times definitely that we're in. And so again, thank you for, um, just having us on tonight and just uh, excited for what Virginia's got. Cause I, I know it's um, 
with her just releasing the book and the co-creating thing. It's um, there's a lot of good nuggets in there and um, it'll be uh, that was kind of a journey for, for her and for us really. Cause it mm-hmm. was, it was her first book, right. You know, first book that she's written. And um, so it was, a, it was a learning process, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Well, it's it my good. classroom, you know, <laughs> and you know, Sean, what you mentioned about just that, desire to see the fruit. I think that was probably the catalyst for writing the book because I, I'm thinking my journey is probably a lot, a lot like most, most of you guys on here. Um, interesting that you mentioned the shift that we experienced in 2012, Terry, because that's, that was when the Lord, you know, you know, we, we come to the Lord, we, you know, get acquainted with Holy Spirit, And then most of us got acquainted with the revelatory realm, you know, dreams and visions and hearing from God, prophetic stuff. And it was in 2012 that the Lord really, you know, after having stewarded the revelatory season that really shifted me into the realm of encounter. When I started, you know, I started having dreams and then I would wake up and realize that wasn't a dream. I was really there, you know, and then hearing the message of living out of heaven and being able to go you know, through the gate of the imagination at will and go back into encounters and living out of that, the reality of living out of that realm is really, really opened up to me in 2012. So, you know, this last, you know, eight years for me have been about really exploring and stewarding that realm, you know, the courts of heaven and just, you know, walking with the father, you know, in my garden and the trading floor, just all the heavenly things that we've experienced that we know are real you know, and it's just becoming comfortable and familiar with that and realizing, you know, that's more real than this realm. This realm is just a manifestation of that realm. And really, we know it with our heads, but really knowing it by revelation. That's kind of where I've been in this last season. But I would say probably the last, I don't know, within the last year or so, the only thing I know to call it is this holy discontentment rising up in me. You know how when it's time for the more and you start, you you know, and I've been at that place and it's like, you know, I know this is real. You know, I know when I do a court case, I know when I legislate something that is more real than this computer sitting in front of me. But I, what's been, what my spirit has been crying is I want to see it manifest. I want to see the physical tangible manifestation of that which I know to be true and it's been just you know crying out to God for that and so this book I think was an answer to that cry you know he puts the cries in our hearts so he can answer them so he put it there so he could unlock these things but it was um so it's answers to some of the questions I had of you know father I know that you said xyz and I know I encountered this in the heavenly realm so where's the physical manifestation and so this um <clears throat> this this is my this is my textbook for my co-creation classroom so in 20 <laughs> it's funny in 2015 the lord sat me down and he said you're behind schedule and he um he sent me to summer school and for real. And he had me clear my schedule as much as I could. And from 5.30 to 1.30 every day for that entire summer, I just went into a literal classroom in the realm of the spirit. And I was mentored by the seven spirits. And then when I graduated from that classroom, he let me walk on the ancient paths with him. And usually Enoch is there and, you know, just things continued to unfold. So this is my co-creation classroom. And um, I won't go into the this part of it very much, but my king's classroom is a prerequisite for my co-creation classroom because we have to learn to steward and govern our own life and then it expands you know first in jerusalem then judea then samaria you know it expands out to stewarding and spreading our wings out over all of creation under his authority walking in our authority so you know really that why Sean was laughing is I kind of like manifested through all the chapters because I was having to work it in me, you know, and, and, um, you know, it brought up it, I really had to wrestle with the Lord through the questions that I had. And I learned, you know, he likes our questions, you know, he, he doesn't, I, I wasn't brought up in church like that. So you don't question God, but I learned he, you know, one thing, if I desired of the Lord, you know, to behold his beauty, to, to inquire of him. And he really, really likes that. So this book was kind of one of, of me wrestling through all the how-tos. You know, Father, how come 
you know, you said this and I know this is real and I haven't seen it yet. And he just, you know, he poured out his wisdom. So to me, um, you know, I think that one of the things that he, that one of the keys that he showed me is he showed me from scripture, the pattern of how he created, because it's a pattern that we follow and it's plain in scripture, as plain as, as day, when you have eyes to see it. And that was the post um, that you shared, what, maybe it's a couple of days ago, Terry, in this group. And he just broke it down for me of, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Elohim, it's plural, and it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when those first, you know, few, you know, two or three verses of scripture, you can see that creation originated in the mind of the Father, that Holy Spirit was the one who brooded over it, right? And it was the, let there be is the word we know from John 1 that Yeshua is the word. He's the word made flesh. So he's both the spoken word and the tangible manifestation. So the Lord was just showing me that if you follow that, you know, this is how I created. If you follow this pattern, you can create too. And so really it has to do with, you know, they were all, they were Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We know they're three in one. And so we know they were in complete agreement about the whole process. And so, you know, the father represents our thoughts in, uh, you know, Holy spirit represents our emotions. And if you even look up the Hebrew word, you know, uh, for Holy spirit in that passage, you can see that it, it literally talks about emotions and wind and all those things. And of course we know Yeshua has to do with our words and the physical tangible walking out of stuff. So he just started showing me that when we're in alignment with him and with ourselves, that creation, it it's happens. It's a natural process. So we think of miracles as being like something wow and unusual that happens, but they're not, it's not supposed to be unusual. It's supposed to be how we normally live our life. This is supposed to be just you know, we've fallen from what's normal and now what's normal has been, re, you know, restored to us. We don't know what Adam lost. So we're not, we don't really know what Jesus has given back to us, but he's showing us. And so, um, you know, this season is about walking in, in just what's supposed to be, what's supposed to be normal. So, you know, it's about bringing our thoughts into alignment with the father, bring our emotions into alignment and that would include, you know, our conscious mind as well as our subconscious and unconscious layers. You know, David talked about truth in the inward parts. So there's parts in us that we don't even see. God sees it, but we don't even realize it yet. And then, of course, you know, the, the power of the spoken word. So it's realizing that our thoughts create, our emotions create, even things that, you know, even stuff stored in our DNA, even unconscious things that we're not aware of is still resonating a frequency. It's still resonating something and it's creating something. And our, we know our words create, you know, we know that what we do physically, you know, we know all of those things create. And so what Holy Spirit just really was showing me is we don't understand how powerful we are. We don't understand how we are creating all the time, but the real key is we don't understand how conflicted we are. You know, and I think that's just part of the fall that's been that, that it's, it's the restoration of the soul, the renewing of the mind. And so, you know, we have a lot of a lot of times, you know, and we probably can all relate to this <clears throat> in your conscious mind. I've worked with people. I've prayed with people that in their conscious mind. Oh, I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I worked with a, a young girl several years ago. And, you know, in her conscious mind, she wanted to be healed. She was in stage four cancer, a young mom of, of two, two children. And, uh, but when we really, by the, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, started digging in there, found out that there was, you know, she had severe abuse as a child, a lot of shame and condemnation, and she was holding on to a death wish. She'd wish she was dead since she was probably six or seven years old. So in her conscious mind, it was like, yes, I want to be healed. I believe God can heal me. And that was all true, but it was classic double-minded man. So, you know, when I was in the typical church, you know, settings, you know, we've heard, you know, sermons on the double-minded man and James, you know, and it's like, you're not sold out for God or whatever, you know, we've all heard that, right? And so the Lord was showing that's not what that means. It means that you're not whole. There's parts of your being that are aligned with me and parts that are not, and they're both creating something. 
Because think about what James says, the double-minded man, he, he cannot receive what he asked for. And so it's not a condemning statement. It's not like God is up there going, you're not sold out for me, so I'm not going to answer your prayer. It's not that at all. He's so for us. What it is, is it's a revelation of how we are created and how when my mind, my conscious mind is creating uh, wealth, you know, I want to, I want to steward global finance, but my stuff stored in my DNA or my subconscious mind is saying rich people are selfish, right? Then we're, it's like trying to walk two different directions at the same time. So I think the thing that really was so comforting and amazing in this book is the Lord showed me really uh, how simple it is. It's just coming into alignment with him and with ourself. And then what's already exist, it, everything exists, everything that you've ever, ever, ever prayed for, everything that's on your destiny scroll, everything that you're going to co-create out of your oneness with God already exists in, in its entirety in his heart. It's already yes and amen. So when we pray, we're not, we're not praying for God to like do something or, you know, what we're doing prayer is just a way of connect, staying connected with him in an awareness of our oneness. It doesn't make us one with him. We became one spirit with him at salvation. It's just spending time with God and prayer is just a conscious awareness of him. Um, like, you know, transferring a file from a computer, you know, staying connected long enough for the file to transfer, right? So prayer is not moving God's hand. He's already said yes. You know, if it's, if it's on your destiny scrolling, he's promised it to you. The answer is already yes. It's just abiding in him long enough for that thing to make its way from the heavenly realm into the earthly realm. And that happens when we're an unobstructed channel and we're an unobstructed channel when we're in agreement with him and with ourselves. And so it's really, it's, it's, it's not complicated, but it does take work because we don't know, you know, that the heart is deceitful, who, who knows it, right? We don't really know what's in the depths of our heart, but the next verse says, I, the Lord know the heart. So he knows, he knows those conflicted places in us and he's just waiting for us to ask the question so he can shine his light there. And then we just repent, right? Which is not beat ourselves up. It's just think another thought. It's just come home to my heart. It's just come into alignment so that what's already, what's he's already released from his heart can just flow through us and manifest here. So it's, you know, it's not an easy process because we have to deal with our junk and that's not always fun. We have to see things that maybe we don't want to see, but it's not a complicated process. You know, we're creating God's image, a three-part being that's like a mirror image of God, the Father, God, the Son, and Holy, God, you know, God, the Holy Spirit. And here we are with our thoughts and our emotions and our words and our physical body. And so when we're, you know, think about, um, we all know the story of the Tower of Babel. Remember when God said, you know, they're in unity, nothing that they, that they want will be withheld from them. That's the power of being in, in total alignment. So it's, it's really, this has been such a cool it's really been cool to me to see that it's not complicated, but it is, okay, now we got to walk this out. But I believe this is the season where we're really going to see some amazing things. And, you know, maybe in past seasons, you know, there were those miracles that God just did for us. Remember maybe when you were a new believer and all you had to do was just stumble out of bed and there he was doing all this awesome stuff. And that was showing us what's possible and it was showing us his nature. But I think most of us in this call are mature sons that he's wanting to grow to maturity. So he's wanting not to do it for us anymore. He's wanting to do it with us. And so he wants to teach us the how to's. And that's really what this book is about is explaining maybe why you haven't seen the manifestation yet, but giving you hope, like, here's all you got to do. And it's, it's not complicated. And he's so right there and you got this. And I, I was I'm just, muted. I was just, <laughs> to, I, the girl. I was just, I want to play Nintendo. I said, no, no, why don't you go see if Dad will read your story? Get a story. And he said, he grabbed his favorite story, rock, paper, scissors for Dad. Okay. Um, what I, I was, what I was going to say was, do you guys uh, hear us? Yeah. Okay. Um, was just for us to learn how to be honest with ourselves, with where we're at. I think that's probably 
you know, can be a big hurdle for a lot of, for a lot of folks is, you know, that hasn't, um, <laughs> when we, when we first started this journey, we ran across the Bob Newhart video where it says, stop it. <laughs> and, and that's what the, you know, that's what the religious spirit just, that's, it just stop it, you know, and I, I think we just gotta, we've gotta be honest with ourselves with where we're at and not be ashamed or afraid you know, of what, of what it's about, what it looks like, because God already sees it. God already knows it's there. And just for us to be able to be honest and then begin to, as Virginia's, you know, pointing out, there's a place that's not in agreement yet with, with God's word. And so I need to begin to co-labor with him in that place so that more of me can come into agreement with him. <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions or comments so far? I, could I do. Talk, I could talk all night about this. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're amazing. What God has shown you is so amazing. And I'm so in the same journey with you. But I have a question. Um, when you said, when you were talking about the Elohim, could you please repeat what you said about the representation? The Holy Spirit is our emotion. God the Father is. Yes. Yes. What I'm, do is I'm just going to, I'm going to give you the particulars. Um, I've put, I've got it in my book. So I, um, so, you know, we know Genesis 1 26, let us make man in our image. So we see that Elohim is plural, right? So, um, it's, um, if you're take, if you want to write this down, that word there is Strong's H four, three, zero. And it's, it's, you know, it's the word Elohim. So when you look at spirit, in Genesis one, it's Ruach, it's uh, Strong's H7307. And it means wind, breath, mind, spirit, seed of emotion, desire, a seed of or organ of mental acts, energy of life. And then of, co of course, talking about the person of the Holy Spirit It's never talking about this depersonalized thing, you know, the universe, blah, blah, blah. It's not talking about that. So we see from these first few words in Genesis that God created is plural. So it's talking about God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And God, the Holy Spirit, that word Ruach, literally, one of the meanings of that is emotion, which is, you know, our emotions. And then, of course, we know from John 1, you know, we know Yeshua is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when we put this all together, you know, Genesis 1, 1 through 3, when we combine all those definitions, you, we can see, you know, when there was that let there be light that everything came from, it was first in the mind of the father is the seed, the Holy Spirit, remember it said Holy Spirit brooded over the void. So the emotions, that's, that's, the, that's the Holy Spirit. And then the let there be is the word, that, that the creative word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So the father thought it, the spirit gave life to it, the son said it, and there was life. So that's the pattern that's the, the creative pattern. It worked for Elohim and it works for us who are created in the image of, of God. And we are little Elohim. Now I'm not saying we're gods, but I'm saying we're gods. <laughs> you know? So it's not that new age junk. It's not that because the new age, you know, there's, there can't be a counterfeit without a real. So the counterfeit is you know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm God and, you know, that the new age has problems with the Lordship of Christ has problems admitting I'm a sinner. I need a savior, all of that stuff. But the real is, you know, when you look at that same word Elohim, um, it's remember when Jesus, it, it, the word, if you did look up the word Elohim, if you look up that Hebrew word, it means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, or God-like ones. So Elohim is with a capital E is talking about him and father, son, Holy spirit, three and one and how they created, but we're little E Elohim because we're God-like ones at salvation. We became one spirit with him. And this all happens out of our oneness with him. And as we grow into the fullness of that oneness. So remember in John 10, when all the Pharisees were like, you know, saying Jesus was blasphemous, you know, because he made himself like God. And he actually quoted, um, you know, he said, uh, isn't it written in your scriptures that you are gods is what Jesus said. And he was quoting from Psalm 82, six. And it was that same word that you see in Genesis one, it was the word Elohim. So Jesus was basically letting us know 
that the same, the same word Elohim, you know, David said it and Yeshua said it. So this lets me know out of our oneness with God that we can, fo we can follow the creative pattern. If it works for big E Elohim, it works for little E Elohim. So when we're in as, as much unity with him and ourselves as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let there be will create. I mean, and it is creating. Our, our let there be's are creating. You know, we are creating our worlds, whether we realize it or not. You know, our thoughts, our emotions, our words, I think we all know that. But I think the dot that hadn't connected for me yet was to realize, oh, wow, I'm creating conflicting things. So that's why I'm two steps forward, three steps back. And to understand the need for being in alignment, not just with God, but with myself and how to tell when, you know, how do you know if you're not in alignment with yourself and with God? And one of the things that I always say, and it's in the book somewhere is uh, where there's fruit, there's root, right? So, you know, for when we're like, okay, you know, I really believe X, Y, Z. I really believe that God has called me to uh, steward global finance and he's put this on my destiny scroll and I've encountered it in the, in the heavenly realm and I've done court cases and blah, 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 but it hasn't manifested yet. Now, yeah, there's timing thing, of course, I understand that, but I think something else for us to understand is it could be if there's fruit of something in my life, if there's fruit of poverty in my life, then it's not, a, you know, it's not a, oh, you know, beat yourself up or shame on you. It's none of that. It's just looking at the fruit and going, okay, there's just a root in there somewhere. Holy Spirit, you know me better than I know myself. Search me. And that's what these 40 days have been about. You know, there's been, you know, I don't know about you guys, but these 40 days have really been, you know, lots come to the surface and myself and everybody I know. And that's what we want to happen. So we can see the roots that are producing the fruit that we don't want. And we can put them under the blood and we can deal with those things and we can come into alignment, all of us. I know that was a little more than an answer to your question, but did it answer your question, Kathy? <laughs> uh, unmute yourself. You're muted. Yes. Okay. So, so exciting. So um, I have this, I have this poster in my house because I'm a trauma therapist. So I deal with a lot of roots and a lot of fruits. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a poster in my house. It's by William G. Null. And he's, he's gone to be with the father now, but his, he has this poster and it's called from rejection, it's fruits and it's roots. And it's so wonderful. And um, it's not about the assignment. It's about the alignment is the way I walk. <laughs> I like and, that. Yeah. I and to so, steal that for you. That's <laughs> girl, you can have it. Go for it. Go for it. So, and, and I'm reading this book. I don't know if you've heard of a guy named Michael Heiser. Michael Heiser talks about the Elohim and how God has a divine family and we are his earthly family yes. and how the divine family, the divine council includes lady wisdom. I've met her. I've been to the soaking pool in heaven. I've picked up diamonds in heaven, in the river of life. God showed me the tree that I was planted by the rivers of, of living water, the river of living waters. It's so amazing when we can co-create. It's just so exciting. You guys, you are a blessing. I'm so happy to see. I'm just so happy to meet you. It's an honor. Thank you very much for letting me talk. Oh, lifeline. There's, there's so much, there's so much coming, so much coming. Thank you. <laughs> exciting to connect. You know, you're such an amazing connector, Terry. And I so love, you know, we didn't know, you know, it's kind of like, um, like Groundhog Day. You know, you think you're the only one out there and you stick your head up, <laughs> you're looking around it's like, wow, there's other folks, you know, we might be a little bit scattered, but we're hearing the same things and it's God speaking and he's, He's really growing us to maturity and it's so exciting and encouraging. So it's so, so cool to connect with you guys. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. You know, we, we're, I came out of the church age like everybody else and I'm not against the church. I'm against the religious spirit operating in the church. And so I had to make a conscious decision. Am I going to stay here? And I was led by several dreams and visions and uh, prophetic words and and back in the prophetic days I was in that for 15 years and but I had to make a decision to to walk away and leave everything and I was just thinking today how the Lord took me on my journey out to uh, uh, Reno Nevada uh, 
took me through a place called Death Valley. <laughs> and, and Death Valley Junction was a little town there. And I looked up, I was looking for pictures because I want to, I want to share my experience there. But what had happened that night was I had an encounter with God that, that he went down a whole list. And I said, I want you to deal with some stuff tonight. And I was wanting to go to sleep. So I can, I was doing photography back at those days and I wanted to get up early before it got hot and drive through Death Valley and take some pictures on my way. Uh, but that didn't happen that way. God had another agenda. So I had to lay down my idea, but he went through the whole process. Terry, you need to die for fame and fortune. You need to die to your need for recognition. You need to die for your need uh, for titles. You need to, uh, uh, die to your need to have a network, a ministry, uh, voice your opinion, your need to be right. Da, 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 da. It went on all night. But from that encounter with the Lord, it was one of the most significant nights of all my entire life mm -hmm. and changed everything. And so I'm really key on, on uh, you know, recalibrating uh, our, our, our life and search me, oh God, Psalm 139, 23 and 24 is my favorite prayer because on the front of my Bible, I have embossed one John 4, 17. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. Ye are gods. Mm -hmm. But are we doing it? You know, we're talking about it. Like you said, we're talking about that in the church age, but now we're to the place we got to, it's not a place where we have to know everything. You know, me being a nuclear engineer for another 15 years was I had to know everything before I did anything. I was a perfectionist. I was a legalist. And, and we see that a lot on the courts of heaven page and the governing uh, uh, creation page that people sit back and wait. They're afraid to make a mistake. But look, if you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, if you're living in him and moving in him and having your being in him, you're in a safe place. And mistakes are just built into part of the program. That's you're right. going to make countless numbers of mistakes and i always make sure i'm covered under the blood so so i can freely make mistakes when you know i'm not perfect yet but we're working we're striving under perfection in the order of melchizedek so it's pretty awesome time and that night just changed revolutionized my whole thing i think i should take uh, bus trips to death valley if anybody wants to sign up but you can do it right in your home right in your your uh, spirit right in your soul uh, in your body deal with it there and then we'll have a bus trip some other time maybe yeah i'm sure they'd be signing up in droves <laughs> yeah <right. Not. laughs> uh, but you know uh, virginia this is amazing I, I i love your book i'm i'm gonna actually start it here tonight i think you know and and yeah, i had so much going on but but can you take us through just a kind of a walk through each chapter, maybe just a short, whatever you, I mean, whatever you go through in that book to, and I'm going to put it up here because there's some new people that came in. I'm going to put it back up here for a minute and tell us how we can buy the book. There it is right there. Hey, and Terry, I'm going to answer Stella's question real quick about the 40 days. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the 40 days that we're talking about is called uh, a lull, E-L-U-L. And if, has it been the past six years, five, six years? Yeah, probably five, yeah, six, yeah. Yeah, probably for the past six years. Um, a lull basically starts at the first day of the sixth month on the Hebrew calendar. Um, I'm not into the names of the, the Hebraic months uh, for, for several reasons, I won't get into them, but um, so a little starts on the first day of the sixth month, and then you've got the 30 days of that month, and then you've got the first 10 days of, of the seventh month, which is called Yom Teruah. The first day of that month is called Yom Teruah, or the blowing of trumpets. You've probably heard it called Rosh Hashanah. Um, it just looked like you were drinking space dust. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Do it again. I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, so the first day of the seventh month is called you know Yom Teruah, which is the blowing of trumpets. It's also called uh, Rosh Hashanah, um, and then the tenth day of that month is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So those forty days are the forty days that we're talking about, and again, it's called a lull. And for the past five or six years, as we have purposed in our heart to just observe. 
um, not really do anything, but just we're, we're entering into these 40 days and being aware. And there's, we've just found that there's been a real grace for us, you know, and of just the Lord, uh, Virginia has another teaching uh, that she did probably three, four or five years ago as well called um, break redeeming time and breaking cycles. Um, and it has to do with a lull and just, so basically what we've learned through the season is just, there's a grace for us to just break patterns that we've been wrestling with that we're aware of and God just, you know, pointing them out and just saying it's time, you know, as we grow, you know, we're shifting out of those ungodly patterns in our life. And that's what we've been experiencing in these 40 days for the last five, five or so years is that mm -hmm. there's just been a grace for us, um, you know, just to to break a cycle, you know, repent, uh, you know, him wanting to heal or restore something, and then beginning to see that shift coming in the spring of the following year. Um, so it's just been kind of like in our heart, um, and the intent of our heart was just to kind of observe, um, to be more aware of his calendar, not that we're doing anything you know, religious in observing it. It's just being aware to me, it's just being aware of what day it is according to his calendar. And, um, well, I mean, we know Jesus is the fulfillment of all the feasts. We know we're outside of time anyway. <clears throat> right. But we have learned that inside, inside the fabric of time, God has woven a very particular grace in this season. And so it's not like you can only repent during these 40 days or it's, you know, it's not like time, time is not meant to be a limitation. We're in dominion over time because it's a created thing. But we found that because of the, the grace that God has woven into the fabric of time, it gives you a little extra momentum. And I think that's helpful. So it's extra momentum to see what you need to see and just grace to repent. And what we found is that, you know, the, the 30 days of the month of Elul, there's just a supernatural grace. Stuff comes to the surface. I mean, it's in your face, you know, and that's not always comfortable, but it's a good thing. And then you've got the 10 days of awe where you repent. And again, it's not, we got to get, we got to get rid of our religious definition of repentance. It doesn't mean feel condemned. It means come home, right? So, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm falling short of the, um, the, the amazing destiny that you have for me. So here, let me come home. Let me come back up. Let me come back home to your heart. And then what we found is that those things that we say yes to and the things that we say no to are sealed at Yom Kippur and uh, they produce tangible fruit in our lives, uh, usually by Passover in the spring. So again, it's not like a legalistic thing. It's not like a limitation. It's just, a you know, we live in this, in we live inside of time realm. We're supposed to be living from a place of dominion over time. And time is a tool that we use to fulfill our destiny, to advance the kingdom, to glorify God. So knowing how time works can help us uh, move faster. It can give us faster momentum in our walk. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yes. Um, can I say something? Yes. Okay. So for me, uh, what you just, what you just said in the past few minutes um, has kind of answered a lot of questions. So at the beginning of the 40 days you're talking about, I didn't know you were talking about this same 40 days, but at the beginning of those 40 days, I saw a lot of, um, you know, call to fast, call to this, call to that. I didn't have a full understanding of what, what we were being called to. I got a lot of, um, you know, Facebook posts and things, but I, I just couldn't, I couldn't grasp it. I had, a, I had an idea of what they were trying to say, but I couldn't grasp it. But um, the, the, the past few minutes with your explanation, unfortunately, I mean, the, the 40 days have, have ended a little late for me to be, you know, coming into the realization, but you have helped me understand what the past 40 days should have been about. You know, I, I, I really don't know what, um, how much, how, like you said, we're outside of time. So I'm just hoping that this one day that's left, God can do. Oh, he can, he can save a city in a day. 
You can go back and get it. So first, you can if you want to hear it, I've got it in great detail. It's a teaching on my website. It's a free free audio teaching on virginiakillingsworth.com, and it's called okay. Breaking Cycles in, in Redeeming Time. And so it, right. it goes into a lot of detail, gives you a lot of scripture, and it'll help you understand more. But I'm going to have to go back and get mine too. <laughs> I have to go into details about this, but we had this crazy. I will tell you this really awesome praise report super quick. So. We've had a drug house. Can I say something? No. Yes. Before she shares that, so I just want to say too that another uh, another thing that like intent in our heart mm -hmm. is to in Genesis mm -hmm. one it says that the the stars right that, mm -hmm. that were put there for times and seasons right so so the intention of my heart is to learn how to honor why God has put them in creation so that they can do what they were created to do. And then for me to line up with how he's created creation. And so okay. part, of, part of doing that is observing the times and seasons according to how he has set them up. And okay. so, so for us, that's, that's been a kind of an intentional thing that we've been learning how to do over the last several years and just really aligning with, um, you know, for me, I would just say it's it's learning how to align with with him in how he has created creation and the movement within creation and what it's for and what it's doing. You know, that it says the heavens are all, you know, the heavens are declaring his glory. They're always speaking. They have a purpose and a function. So for me personally, I'm just I've been learning and wanting and desiring to just honor, just honor that and yeah. have eyes to see and ears to hear just to begin to discern the heavens and what they're doing, what they're saying. Okay. Uh, that's a yearning in my heart too. Yeah. So you can, uh, I'll just, this is super quick, but I kind of was, I was a little too busy during, I was really looking forward to just spending extra time with the Lord during a lull. And I got super busy. We had this drug house next door to us and that with people that we've been ministering to for like almost 10 years and long story short, the guy goes to jail and the girl, we end up helping her go into Teen Challenge Women's Program. She gave her life to Christ and it's really just going for it. She's doing so, so good. So what we've been doing for the last three months is renovating the house, cleaning oh, and renovating what, the house, what, you've been doing. what I've been doing, <laughs> cleaning <laughs> the house and uh, we've got, uh, so we can rent it so that the rent money can pay for her rehab. And okay. so, um, so anyway, uh, we've got the, we've got some amazing folks that are going to be actually moving in on Tuesday. They're missionaries, and they're they already were having a Bible study in our neighborhood before we even connected with them. This awesome God thing. But I said all that to say that I missed my lull, and I was like, oh, I was so disappointed. I'm like, we're outside of time. I have dominion over time. I'm gonna go back and get it. Oh, <laughs> so that's yeah. what I'm. Doing. I'm going to go back, but I, I, I would also say that even though I wasn't, ha, didn't have the, the time just sitting in the presence of the Lord, like I, I wanted to, he did reveal, you know, he did reveal the things that needed to be revealed, you know, the cycles and the patterns, uh, they were really in my face. So, you know, he, he, he I saw what I needed to see. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Co-creating, I think is learning that where, you know, Adam had dominion over all of creation. Time is a created thing. Remember God said, mm -hmm. so we're used to thinking that we're, uh, 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 you know, Adam fell from a position of dominion to a position of slavery, right? He went from, you have dominion over all of creation yeah. to work yeah. by the sweat of your brow. And so that's in our mind, that's in our construct is that we're up under time, we're at the mercy of time. So part of co-creation is learning how to walk in dominion over time and under his authority to bring that time under our dominion and use it as the tool that it is. It's a tool to advance his kingdom. So um, that's, that's part of what learning to co-create with God involves. Is you Thank know, you. Thank what so we most of the time don't, I mean, how many, how many of us a lot of times feel at the mercy of I don't have enough time or whatever? Don't we sometimes feel that way or, you know, I, old or I, whatever, right? Well, We're supposed to be operating from a position of dominion because it's what Jesus gave back to us. I, 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 right now, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm not even just um, feeling that on a, um, 
how shall I say it, on a minuscule basis, as in um, I don't have time. I feel that, but at the same time, I also feel like so much has passed me by. I, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I've been a Christian for quite a while, but right now it's like being impressed on me. I don't know where that is coming from. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't I don't know if it's God or I don't know, but it's being impressed on me like I've wasted a lot of time. I haven't wasted it in, you know, righteous living that way. Maybe if I had, I, I could probably say, hey, okay, so I, I made them, um, I made inroads on the other side. So I have been in this life, and yet I feel like I have not. I have waste i feel like i have wasted time i'm so i i i just feel like i need time or i need to capture i don't know i don't know how to play. and in this I forget, it's the chapter on the imagination i talk about you know yeshua is the is the was and the is to come so we can literally go into the is and we can travel the timeline and we can access the was, we can access the is to come. We can literally rewrite our story. And the, the chapter on the imagination talks about how we can do that and where that is in the word. It's all in the word. Using the imagination to do that is a gateway and it's, it's, um, it's all in the Bible. And so um, that chapter talks about how to do that. We can do that. We can redeem the time. All right, thank you. Would you please just post your website um, address. Uh, I would need to type it in. Another thing I want to, I want to, you know, I, you know, a lot of us have that kind of thoughts and uh, including me, I have had too, but uh, just consider uh, this for a moment that the Hebraic sages believe that, uh, let's just say uh, he knew us before the foundation of the world. So we sat down with, with Yahweh and he revealed our scroll to us, everything we do before the foundation of the world, everything we do in this life. And he knows, he, he probably is very well aware how you're gonna to begin to think and how you're gonna to begin to do. And I just wanna encourage you to and everybody here, we deal with that a lot on the courts page uh, because we don't see from God's eternal perspective. We see what's in our face. We don't look at the root of he's, he's, he's taken us down a path that, that only he knows will get the end results. You're going to yeah. fulfill everything that's written on your scrolls because he's releasing uh you know, he, it was a creative word, a creative declaration, a decree that he wrote over you and you agreed to it. And now part of it is that, that, that rediscovery, recalibration of what's that. And we really haven't missed anything that we think we do. Our mind, our, our, our conscious, consciousness wants to uh, impress us that maybe we did. But, but when I get out of that, that uh, downward spiral and begin to spiral up into his eternal purposes you know i looked at coronavirus and i said why why is this happening i looked at it at a great time in my life to pull back and to begin to to seek the lord on what i was to do and he realigned restructured everything i do and so i don't worry about the things i see out there with my five senses uh i i i focus on what the eternal perspective of what God is doing in my life, according to the scrolls. And when I begin to see the scrolls through inquiring of the Lord and an intimate personal relationship with him, I come to the place where I know it is written. That's what becomes my, my the declaration. That's a co-creative force with him because it's already written. You're just in agreement with it. And that's an accelerator to the manifestation. Yeah, it's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you very Stella, much. Stella, I would say that I would still say that you're right on time. <laughs> because you're getting to hear what you're getting to hear. Okay. About about being a manifested son, learning how to live out of heaven. It's like I don't I couldn't pinpoint a time, but I'll just say 2012-ish. 
that I believe Father God started releasing the revelation of the sons into creation. And those that have ears to hear will begin to hear it and come into it. Okay. Well, so, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share a little testimony. This happened during a lull, so it was really interesting. So I won't go into my whole testimony, but I, I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was nine. And when I was 10, my parents sent me to a a fundamentalist Baptist church and they didn't believe in any of that. And long story short, I denied Holy Spirit for like 20 years. And when I came back to Holy Spirit, you know, I had so much regret and, you know, wondered, <clears throat> oh, you know, where, you know, where would I be had I not taken that wrong turn kind of thing, you know, and how, what would my life have been had I, you know, gone to a, a, a spirit filled church and you know I'd be so much further ahead and you know just that those dumb things that you think but questions really questions that I had before the Lord like what would my life look like had I had continued with the Holy Spirit instead of making that, that wrong turn mm -hmm. so two weeks ago when we were doing this house and we met with the renters for the first time we're having small talk and these missionary people awesome people and we're you know where are you from you know, all this kind of stuff the, the, the guy grew up in the same town that I did. I grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, went to the, the spirit filled church that I had been wondering, God, what would it, where would I be? And I gone to that school instead of this other one. And I was sitting there and he, they're talking about this. They both went to that same church and I'm sitting there and Holy spirit was like, you ask me where you would be. Had you not made that wrong turn, you would be right here where you are right now because here you are sitting here in the same room with these people <laughs> oh my god wow isn't that wow. so cool he was <sighs> time in ways that we can't even comprehend yeah and Thank then you. we can talk about immortality you yeah, know if, <laughs> if you need extra time we were conditioned to believe 80 120 years but the bible is really especially the new testament is really clear on immortality i'll give you one very powerful scripture that you probably hadn't read it this way before i've done webinars on immortality uh john three sixteen. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish oh hello oh <laughs> you hear a lot of people quote that scripture but they leave the shall not perish part out of it so we have this conditioned mindset thinking we have to go to heaven then maybe when i return or get my glorified body i'll be back on earth to finish what he's called me to do and go on to greater things and but no no I think it's a revelation that we need to embrace in the body of Christ that, that we really can be here as long as we need to or want to, to, mm. to do what he's called us to do. So if time is not of the essence anymore. Time mm -hmm. is insignificant anymore. It's yeah. what, we, what we create out of our belief systems, what we create out of our mouth, what we create out of our physical actions uh, and our, our mindsets is what's going to depend or determine uh, you know both negative and positive you know we can create <laughs> a negative environment around us by what we speak and what we're in agreement with the accuser of the brethren worth or we can just begin to be a co-creative uh, legislative and judicial son that that governs from a place of who we are identity and our authority so I love what you guys are talking about Thank, thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you so much. And to think I was about to go to bed, the the, the notification just, I, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. It's 1 a.m. here. So I was about to like, oh God, I can't wait for this. I'm going to bed. And the notification just popped up. And I was like, okay, maybe a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I I'm, here. Appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. May I, may I add something to that? Sure. John, John 6 50 Jesus is doing communion and this is where he says to actually eat his flesh and drink his blood and it sounds very cannibalistic in John <laughs> 6 50 he says but this bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and never die never wow. then, I know and then when it talks about man is appointed once to die how do we know that's not die to me, my sinful man? Mm. Well, last I checked, 
if we're in if we die if we're in christ right the old man has died and the new person has so the way i think we have already died the way I, <laughs> the way i like to explain that verse because that's going to be one of the first verses that you'll get hit by other believers <laughs> if you bring up immortality or not having to die is the hebrews 9 where it says it's appointed it's appointed unto man to die once but in mm -hmm. the rest of that verse, the point is that Jesus died that death. And mm. it's that he came first in the flesh to, to become sin, to die that death. But when he comes the second time unto salvation. Mm. So what I like to say about that one is, so every time someone gets saved, they just experience the second coming of Christ because they just got saved. Because yeah. it says his second appearing is unto salvation. That's so good. Mm -hmm. So it's first in the natural, then in the spirit. <sighs> Thank you. I, I'm going to let you guys go and, you know, keep talking. I, I'm here, but so <laughs> you can focus on other people now. <laughs> if you I don't want to take all your time. If you fall asleep, you'll be I'm, in great thoughts. I'm, a, I'm not going to fall asleep. I'm waiting till the end of this. <laughs> I, I, I'm staying here till the end of this. <laughs> Another, another chapter that I, I wanted to share with everyone is in Job, Job 38, and it's um, uh, another, I think another key for us um, as we're growing and maturing in him is, is having a desire to begin to remember being with him before we came into the earth. Is for him to help us to begin to remember and to unlock those things that you know, I know they're there. I know, our, I know in my spirit, I, I know in my spirit, I remember being with him before the world was formed. So why can't I remember that? And so that's been kind of a journey I've been on because I had an encounter probably um, maybe a year and a half ago now where I met Jesus somewhere in the, in the, up in the stars and he gave me a scroll of remembrance. So I've been, I've just been you know, by faith, engaging with that scroll so that, you know, everything that he's written on that scroll for me to begin to remember can begin to make that, can begin to cross over that light bridge from my spirit into my soul so that I can begin to remember what it is that he's wanting to, me to remember. Um, so what in, in Job 38, what I was wanting to point out is, is God is in that chapter, he's, he's actually not rebuking Job. He's actually helping Job to remember. Mm -hmm. And in verse 21, it says, in some translations, the way it gets translated is it's almost like Joe, it's almost like God's like you weren't even, you weren't there, you weren't there, you know, you weren't even born yet. When in actually the 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 right translation should read, um, you do know for for you were born and the number of your days is great. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like God was having to help Job remember in, in Job 38 like him being there in the beginning with him. And so I would say to every one of us that everything that, every question that God is asking of Job in, in chapter 38, for, for you to take it personally and to realize as a son of God, it is something for you to do and that you can do it. And that it is, that's what a son looks like. That's, um, so let me go down to like verse 31. Uh, let's see. So the first, the original mandate is to be fruitful, um, right? To be fruitful and multiply, subdue and have dominion, right? It's that, that's the original mandate for us. So in verse 31, it says, um, I'm sorry, in verse 33, knowest thou the ordinance of the heavens can now establish the dominion thereof in the earth. And I would say to every one of us, yes, mm -hmm. as a son, I can. Yes, <laughs> that's good. So again, the point of this chapter is, is for, for us to realize that, you know, again, I believe God is, tr is, is trying to get Job to remember or helping him to remember who he is and who he was in the beginning with him. And, and it's, I mean, that's a, that's a big mind leap for, for a lot of us that have been in the church for a long time. <laughs> so the was, the is, and the is to come. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So, uh, Terry, you asked just to, do you still want me to do a quick run through of the chapters? Sure. We'll just go okay. wherever we go and in, okay. in the spirit. Yeah. Whatever, whatever happens. 
so uh, the first chapter is called The Dance of the Two Camps. And it's basically, you know, have you ever wondered what's your part and what's God's part in this whole miracle thing? You know, do I just wait and he, he does it or is it up to me? You know, and so it's, uh, you know, it's from the Song of Solomon, the Shulamite's journey of growing into the fullness of her oneness with her beloved. And it's also, that word is also used, manaim is the Hebrew word, and it's also used when Jacob wrestled with God, right? So it's that wrestling with him that, because basically it's the balance of God's sovereignty and our power and God's sovereignty and our inability. So it's just what's God's part and what's our part? Yes. It's how it's, we're, we, he created us much more powerful than we realized, but we don't, we're not, we're not doing this out of orphanhood. We're not doing it on our own. We're doing it out of that place of, I died with Christ and he's living through me, doing through me what I can't do for myself as I yield. And it's, it's, uh, it's the dance of the two camps. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory as he, it's like he said, Terry, as you know, uh, it's as, he is so am I in this world so that's what that that and it goes all the way back I don't think we get bogged down but it goes all the way back to really what happens to you at salvation you know really you really died and he really resurrected through you and he can you know he can miracles are no big thing for him and we know that so it's just learning how to let him um do what he's been doing he's been co-creating co with God since the very beginning and it's his life that's living through us so it's just that, you know, kind of reminding us of what we already, already know. Um, so that's, that's the short of chapter one, uh, working out your own salvation. So what, what happened in our spirits at salvation, working its way out, right? So when it works its way out to our soul, right? We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our emotions are healed, right? It keeps working its way out into our bodies. That's where we experience immortality that's when we experience supernatural wholeness and all that stuff then it keeps working its way out into all of creation so that's that's when you know our salvation it's already done if any man's in christ he's a new creation all things are passed away all things become new that has already happened in my spirit my spirit is good to go but it works its way out transforming everything and so that's you know understanding of that process is really i think important to understanding how miracles work chapter two is the fullness of oneness and really it, it's it's what the lord taught me through a real difficult season and i think probably a lot of you guys can relate to this i went through a season where of just tremendous loss and just a real difficult season where it felt like god had abandoned me and i knew you know we know he doesn't and all that blah 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 we know he can't and i knew he couldn't and I remember, I, this one time stands out, this, this one moment really stands out in my mind. I'm walking up to lead worship at this big conference. And in my mind, I'm literally saying, I, I, I wonder if God exists. And you know, you get up, that's not, it's really inconvenient. You know, you get up there and God shows up and it was awesome. It was just the weirdest time in my life. And later the Lord says to me, do you, do, do you know why you doubted my existence? And you know, when he asks you a question, it's because, you know, he, he knows the answer. He, he's, he's luring you into come, let us reason together. And he said, because the God that you knew before didn't exist anymore. That was the God of a baby, but now I'm the God of a young man. And you didn't understand the weaning process. And what he said to me, he goes, I'm not abandoning you. He said, I'm stepping back so that you can grow into the fullness of our oneness. So it felt to me like, you know, in past seasons, you were so faithful and you did all this stuff and I had the warm fuzzies and I knew you loved me to where did you go? It wasn't like I'm leaving you. It was like, like the, the parents of a toddler going, come on, come on, you got this. And that's, but I didn't understand that that was what was happening. So it was a really confusing time. So chapter two is really an under what the revelation that grew out of that season of how we do grow into the full. We, we, we've been made one with him at salvation, but we grow into the fullness of that oneness. So first he does it for us and then he does it with us and then he does it as us. And that's the maturation process, children, young men, fathers. And so it's, it kind of, I think this chapter might, you know, 
I would guess that most of you guys, if you're on this call, you've been through a season like that or are in a season like that, or maybe you're getting ready to experience one. And I think this, this will give you, that chapter will give you a lot of understanding and a lot of comfort in understanding how to, you know, I was, I didn't understand what was happening. So I didn't know how to co cooperate with him in that season. So it took me a little longer than it probably needed to. But when you understand what he's doing in you, you can say yes quicker and then you move, move along faster. Um, so again, then that's, you know, uh, so then chapter three talks about the maturation process and it's uh, from a series of encounters that the Lord had when he took me into the stars and he was, hey, you know, the first time he was like, Hey, you know, uh, he moved the star and let me watch him do it. Then the second time he took me, he was like, Hey, let's do this together. And then the third time he was like, you know what to do, do it. And long story short, that was a, a, an experiential picture of what I call our maturity map, right? When John, first John two, I write to you children, because you know, your sins are forgiven young men, because you've overcome your personal adversary. And I write to you fathers, because you know, the eternal one. So it was like all that he was showing me that in the child phase, he does it for us, because he wants us to know what he's like, he wants us to know he loves us. And then in the young man phase, we have to overcome some stuff. And it's really more in here than it is out here. And uh, then the fathers, then, then that's, you know, that's go creating. But, and, but as young men, we're learning how to do that. So this is just, uh, I've got a quiz in there where you can kind of see where you are on the map. And also, um, you know, I, I shared a story of a really good friend of mine. And um, this guy was saved. He got saved in maximum security prison and radically saved. He was, you know, drug addict and just, he robbed banks and did all kind of crazy stuff. And um, when he got saved, the Lord just sovereignly took away all desire for substance and just, you know, he was on fire. And over a few years, you know, of just, he continued walking with the Lord. And then he started to relapse. And Sean and I were working with him and we knew that it was time. He was mature enough that God wanted to, he had some real deep wounds in his soul. And it was time for him to start dealing with some of the roots of his addiction. And we, you know, said, you know, God just wants to heal some places. And he had a lot of trauma that went all the way back. And um, I'll never forget. He just looked at us and said, no, when I first got saved, God took it all from me. And he was just he was determined that that's what God was going to do again. He didn't understand that he was maturing and that God wanted to do it with him instead of for him. So I think, I think we just miss some things that the father's trying to do because we don't understand that he's more concerned with our maturation than he has our comfort. So the, chapter three is really just about understanding that and helping you to know where you are on the, on your map. Um, chapter four Chapter four is a lot of what we talked about tonight about the pattern of, of co-creation Elohim and how it worked for big E Elohim and how we can use that same pattern. So it was really what we've been talking about tonight, mostly uh, agreement with God and with ourselves. Um, the law of co-creation is when your thoughts, feelings, and words are in alignment, which is the law of agreement, you become, a, become an unobstructed channel through which miracles can freely fr flow. So you don't have to work something up. You're just a you're just a channel for what's normal to just flow through you into the earth. You're just becoming normal. So that's chapter four. Um, uh, there's so much, so much. We talk a lot about dunamis and what ha what really happened with Abraham and Sarah, and that's in a couple of different chapters. But basically, it's the word dunamis is strength, power, and ability, excellence of soul. So it's really what happens to us at salvation and what's worked out. And that's the word dunamis, which is a word for miracle. So it's just letting you know that miracles are really very normal. Uh, and then chapter five, the second part of the book is just really making it practical. So chapter five is how to renew your mind, um, <clears throat> how to align your thoughts with the fathers. And I, I had some really crazy encounters inside the father's heart that were inside the father's mind that were really, really mind boggling. And so um, it has to do, you know, with the power of our thoughts, but also how to know God's thoughts, how to hear his voice. And it really, it highlights some of the most common blockages to that 
if you had an imperfect father, which all of us had imperfect fathers and how to, to move through that. Um, another block is just fear of making a mistake. Terry, you talked about that tonight. Uh, fear of making a mistake, um, not listening. Sometimes we're just not good listeners and that does affect our ability to hear God's thoughts and align with them. Um, not recognizing his voice. Some people say they don't hear from God and they do. They just don't recognize it because it sounds like our own thoughts. And we're expecting, you know, like Moses, you know, from the movies. And we don't realize that he's like light flowing through a prison, right? So when he comes through, when he flows through me, it sounds like me. When he flows through you, it sounds like you, but it's him because we're one. So it's just a lot of people miss hearing God's voice and also miss encountering the supernatural realm because they don't realize that it's, it is so natural and that they, they, they're for the same reason that Israel missed the Messiah. He was too ordinary. And so they missed him. Um, another block is just not, not applying what we've already heard. You know, like what Sean was saying, you know, we've had so much revelation and we got to make sure we're walking in obedience, you know, or God's going to kind of wait and give us time to, be obedient to what we've already heard, um, believing lies. And then I go through some of the most common lies that people believe in your conscious mind and how to identify those and overcome those. And we've got some prayers in there that you can de de decrees and declarations that you can use to shift any lies that you believe in your conscious mind. Um, chapter six is the, um, is the chapter on the emotions. This is the longest chapter in the book. And, oh no, faith is the next chapter. Sorry, that's chapter six. And it talks about what faith is and what it's not. And I learned, this is one of the chapters I manifested the most through because God had to highlight a lot of my misconceptions about what faith is, you know, cause I was feeling like I had to work it up and it wasn't gonna happen if I didn't work up enough faith. And uh, so some stuff in this chapter about faith is, is really going to surprise you because it's not at all, it was not at all what I thought. And faith really has to do with our agreement with God and faith really is substance. And it just talks about the, the fact that the intangible realm is more real than this realm. And uh, that faith is, is a real substance of some things and faith is what is the spiritual substance that translates into earthly substance through us, his gates. And the invisible realm is more real than the visible and just really how it works. And the difference between faith and belief, um, it basically has to do, the Hebrew idea of faith has to do with supporting God, which is weird to think because it's kind of opposite of the Hebrew idea of faith. But if think of um, Moses and Aaron and her and how they lifted up his hands, that was the Hebrew word immunah. And basically, it's just us being his gateway in the in the earth realm. So uh, it didn't it didn't it it comes from the Hebrew word aman, which basically coming into agreement with him is what it is. So there's a lot more to that chapter, but that's that's part of the good the good stuff there. Um, chap the next chapter, chapter seven, is the chapter on the emotions. And that is the longest chapter in the book, because I think it's where we have the most of our problems. It's on the emotions in the heart, um, because it talks about the difference between the conscious mind, the subconscious and the unconscious, and how to identify if you're conflicted in there and how to allow Holy Spirit to bring alignment. So that's the really short of that chapter. But I think that's this is definitely where most of us have problems. And it really I think it gives some really good keys to coming into alignment. And how important it is to do that. So that's the really short version of that. And then the next chapter is um, the imagination. This was the most fun chapter in the book. This is so fun because it's uh, just like playing, playing, being God's playmate, basically. And how, you know, a lot of in the church, we think, oh, well, you know, did, did you make that up or did it really happen? And the answer is yes, because the imagination is a gateway and it really is in the word. The imagination is found all through scripture and how to utilize it to access the kingdom is found all through the word. And it works for unbelievers as well as believers, but it works better for us because we're one with him. So this with the imagination is a really fun chapter. And I talk about how to go into the is and how you can rewrite your story and how you can go into the is and you can create with him your is to come, your expected end, and how he really wants us to do this and how fun it is. The sanctified imagination, 
prayers to open your imagination gate if it's been closed, prayers to cleanse your imagination gate if it's been defiled. Um, you become what you behold, reprogramming the subconscious and the unconscious minds and how Holy Spirit does that a lot of times through dreams and stuff. Um, very long chapter. And this was it, it, real, all those chapters have real practical exercises and stuff that you can, that'll help you apply this <clears throat> practical keys and, and things. Um, learning how to dream with God and how he really wants you to. And if your dreams have died through the difficulty of the last season, he wants to awaken those. Uh, the power of passion. So this talks about literally just fun and creativity and passion and how that's how important that is in the co-creation process which is terry i think why religion is so damaging because it just takes the fun out of everything and so it and the enemy knows that and so it puts the complete damper on our ability to co-create with him it's not always easy and we do have to do hard things but there's such joy and such passion and such fun in it. And so this, um, one of the favorite parts of this chapter is to identify your play personality. I never knew there was such a thing. Cause like, you know, I'm a create, I'm a creator. So cre like painting the walls is fun to me. And that's torture for Sean. He's like a, he's like an explorer. So he likes learning new things and going places he hasn't been before. So learning what fun is to you and how God made you so you can have fun with him and create with him in that way and how important the creative process is to co-creating and how we think creative pe the creativity is like art or something, but really it could be Wall Street. It could be cutting grass. It could be problem solving. It's, but it's all creativity. And if that part in place in us has been shut down, it's going to be more difficult for us to co-create with God from heaven to earth. And you don't separate that from the spiritual stuff. It's all knitted together. So that was really, that's a really fun, fun chapter is how to basically how to, how to breathe in and get filled up and how to breathe out and co-create with God. So that's a fun chapter. And then chapter 10, speak it, create it, Elohim it. Um, this is just basically the power of the spoken word, decrees, declarations. I think most of us are familiar with, you know, word of faith kind of stuff. Um, but the funny story with the title, it's, there's some real cool stuff about the Hebrew letter, Hey, and how he breathes into us, his breath of life and how his voice is the sound of many waters and our voice is the sound of many waters and how the word in scripture is always talked about as being water. Um, but this, the funny story behind the title is we did a legislation thing one night and, um, we, we really hit some stuff hard. We were legislating stuff from heaven into the earth realm and some governmental stuff. And it was like really weighty. You could feel just the weight on some of the decrees and God had us issue some warnings to like Psalm two kind of warnings to people in positions of power. I mean, it was a heavy, heavy session. And at the end, you know, we sealed it all up. And one of the girls was like, we Elohimed it <laughs> and we all just started laughing and it kind of just became a thing, you know? So whenever we do that, we're like, yeah, we Elohimed it because we did. So that's the funny. And I think, I think in there somewhere is the story behind that, but I, we, I think we're going to do a t-shirt. I Elohimed it because we so we, we so can. So that's the spoken word. And then, um, Eleven is the gate of the human will, and I won't go into a lot of details about that, but basically um, if your will is broken or if your will is in rebellion or if your will, you know, it, the, the God gives the human will so much power, more power than what we realize. And so it just talks about issues with the human will that cause one, there's a lot of false doctrine swirling around in our circles right now because of a lack of understanding of how God made the human well, a lot of really dangerous doctrinal error, but also as far as co-creating, if there's issues in the will gate, um, the enemy can use that where we can't, where we not, where we don't create, you know, so I'm not, you know, you're, it talks about your yes and your no and how they both have to be intact and how most people have a problem with their yes or, or with their no and how to bring that into alignment. And then
how to restore your will gate if it's been broken or if it's got rebellion in it or something like that. And then chapter 12 is making the spiritual tangible. So how to work it out where you see the tangible faith without works is dead. So how to just come into agreement, you know, external things don't make stuff happen, but they can be points of agreement that keep what's happened in us working its way out. So like, if you know, like if you're believing for healing and you're taking vitamins, well, vitamins aren't going to be your healer, but it can be a tangible point of agreement that keeps the, again, it's about agreement that keeps that process working out. So we talk about the human body. We talk about being a gate of heaven. We talk about external anchors and how they can help. Uh, we talk about frequency. Everything ex that exists has an electrical frequency. And again, it's, it's about agreement. Uh, communion, we talk about communion as a really important tool for working it out. Um, cleansing your DNA, worship. So it's going to be from 8.30 to 12.30. So. Loving your earth suit and how it's important to love your physical body. Uh, human touch, how that's important. Um, uh, mind maps acts of faith and obedience and uh, angels and heavenly beings and how they help with that and the Hebrew letters and how God sent them to resequence our, uh, our physical bodies. Um, and yeah. And from just from glory to glory, the, the process. So that's a, that's a walkthrough, a short walkthrough of a long book. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Virginia. That was awesome, Sean. Uh, thank you for your input, too. Uh, you know, that's really significant. Uh, I wish all my courtrooms of heaven uh, group would get a hold of your book because we, we hear this great ministry and it's nothing new under the sun. It's an ancient pathway where we get so excited about it. We want to automatically go, let's say, deal with the presidential election. Well, the first and foremost area of responsibility is me. So you need to deal with you first instead of stepping into some uh, unauthorized, you know, Timothy Benz talks about uh, the church being registered in heaven and, and we are the church. So if we are unregistered or not recognized or have standing in that court, we have absolutely no business there until we we deal with our own personal life first. And then as we begin to gain wisdom and experience and knowledge, uh, the Lord will expand our tent pegs to begin to have uh, mandates over a larger territory, uh, cities, states, and nations over uh, the entire creation. Uh, so it's really important to know that we first have to deal with our, our own stuff and and I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm one. I'm in there. I'm an explorer. So I go in there uh, with with Sean. I want to go. You know, next time we we'll just go drive around town or something, and uh, <laughs> and see the murals in Jacksonville. But, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but I think this is so key for every one of us. Just with this, probably the 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 most significant transition in all church history that we are moving into prophetically what no eye seen, ear heard, or mind conceived, the things that he's planned for those who love him. So if we're not engaged in this process, we are going to miss uh, what is coming because we're going to judge it unrighteously and we're going to render our own verdicts, an unrighteous verdict out of the government of self-will and what we know and what we've been through and what we've experienced rather than from the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a very key thing that we first have, to, you know, it's almost remove the log out of your own eye before you try to help somebody else. And so really is where we have to start is always within us. And it doesn't mean you can't occasionally step out and do greater things. I've done that before. And a lot of times uh, I've only do, done, uh, uh, been granted permission or authorization or mandated for two uh international issues normally i don't touch i only operate where i've been i have a legal standing just like an attorney would in the natural same thing if you're not in the courtrooms of heaven uh you know when you begin to deal with your own stuff you start seeing creation come and responding to you partnering with you and, and helping you fulfill your destiny and you're delivering creation from the bondage of corruption at the same time and it gets really really exciting 
and all that stuff is happening everywhere I go. And I'm sure that it will start to happen with you as you begin to just simply engage by faith. The way you described faith was, was incredible. It's not something we have to call down. It's substance we step into, right? And so we are, are we're learning a new, new kingdom uh, language, a new kingdom way we function and physically and spiritually and uh, uh, the motives of our heart and the, uh, the mindsets that we're, we're operating in. He's dealing with all of those. And that's why search me, oh God, has become my favorite prayer. And he starts showing me stuff. And it's a joy because I go through that. I almost pray that prayer every day because I know he's going to show me something the next day or while I sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, as I'm getting free, I feel lighter and I feel more engaged with creation. I feel more engaged with him and Holy Trinity and the cloud of witnesses and the angelic realm. It just, it just, he's expanding my tent pegs to begin to engage with what he created that I was to have dominion over. And so it's really, really exciting where he'll take us. Probably a lot of you have been experiencing things and you didn't even know that creation was partnering with you like me. It was ha things were happening. Uh, just uh, what I thought was accidental that were just really weird and out of the box. And the Lord began to show me as I began to search him, inquire of the Lord, why is all these things happening? And says, well, you've spent seven years in your van alone with me, <laughs> traveling and ministering. And uh, I said, come away with me. And, and I did it, you know, and it's really a place where it was constant dying to self. It was mm -hmm. a constant uh, seven years of, of surrendering and yielding and total abandonment. And I wouldn't change it for anything. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a place where I, I believe a lot of people have said, they've heard God say, come away with me, but what did you do? You know, we're so busy in our mm -hmm. stuff that we won't take time. Now, maybe it doesn't require a seven year life, uh, a span of your life in a, in a van. Uh, but maybe it's something else. Maybe it's, you know, inquire of him to see what that is be. And in other words, we can't stay where we, we are. The world's problems are not going to be solved by, uh, you know, who gets elected in the office of the president. Uh, the church was the original uh, uh, politicians. The church was the original governing force in creation. So all things restored. I love the name of your church and your ministry. All things restored is what God has for mankind to take back and, and reawaken, recalibrate to that, that place where we begin to govern. We don't focus so much on out here being fault finding and critical, judgmental, judging unrighteously, but we stand over seated on our mountain of authority or in Christ where we live and move and have our being over the demonic realm, uh, that hierarchy over that what is happening on the earth. We begin to rule and reign rather than warfare. I know for a fact you guys don't do warfare anymore traditionally like we do, but governing from within him from your seat of authority is a higher form of, of, of uh, warfare than we've ever known before. We have to get governing as a king and a priest and eventually as the bride of Christ in that oneness with, with him is, is where the bride is going to function. And in fact, I like, like uh, Ephesians 4, 13, it talks about the fivefold ministry. Verse 13 says, until, that means uh, if you look up that word until, it's really key. It means a specified time. And so things are turning now towards the rest of the chapter. And it says that we all come into the, the, the stature of the fullness of Christ, right? And so I love that. We all are in the ministry. We all are called to become the full stature. It says a perfect man or a mature man in the different versions to a perfect man in the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I love the thought of doing that. So he was the firstborn of many, and I'm in that line somewhere. I, I'm becoming, uh, it's almost like a paradox. I'm becoming what I already am, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so when you realize that, that everything is significant, everything is being used in your life to, to, to recalibrate us, whether it's good or bad, we need to see from a, 
an eternal perspective. And that's what I continue to do and help people uh, see things from an eternal perspective, not standing on this world. But he says we're in this world, but not of the world, right? So mm -hmm. we have to be more not of the world. And when we're engaging in this world, we become dangerous. We become dangerous to darkness because we come from not the battlefield, but we come from a place where we're, we're, we're a governor, a co-creator, a legislative and judicial son, a king and a priest, and the bride of Christ. And we're able to do more than we ever have before in all church history. So I just want to encourage everybody. I want to say thank you for, uh, for your time tonight. Uh, maybe we have like time for maybe two or three questions, and we'll sign off and let everybody go get some barbecue, like me. Oh, He's still talking about barbecue. <laughs> uh thank you so much it's this is so encouraging but i just wanted to ask for a teeny weeny not to be selfish you know the imagination and um, prayer is there a way that um you think i can lead us in that just to uh you know in that in that session in that prayer please can you ask that again Rebecca? oh sorry um i was saying that the imagination prayer that she has is that with a you, you can put leaders in that prayer session just to heighten our imagination, especially knowing who we are in Christ. But that's part of, you know, who we are. And some people struggle with that. So I'm just hoping that maybe you'll be able to lead us in, in, in a prayer or in a session in that, well, in the, that area. The prayer, the imagination prayer in the book is if your imagination gate has been closed you know, sometimes parents will, you know, sometimes children encounter the spirit realm and the, and the, and the parent says, oh, that's, that's just your imagination. It shuts that gate. Or sometimes the imagination is defiled in the sense of um, pornography or lust, or sometimes just uh, fantasy, you know, or, or when we're not yielded to the Lord, we can start using the imagination just for what we want and it defiles that gate. So the, the imagination prayers in the book are just either to open the imagination gate or to cleanse it from defilement. Or did I misunderstand? Yeah, I, I was just going to add to um, what she was saying is what <clears throat> back in 2012, we um, one of the things the Lord started showing me was that uh, the authority in our lives as children, whether it's our parents or spiritual authority, like our Sunday school teachers, pastors, youth pastors, um, just people that are in spiritual authority over us as as little ones that like what Virginia was saying is their words, the enemy can use their words to defile that gate and ultimately even shut down that gate. So the Lord kind of took us through um, just an example is we took some folks um, just asking the Lord to show people uh, like any words that their parents or spiritual authority, just anyone in authority spoke words over them to the, for the Holy Spirit to come and to remind them of those moments and break the power of those words. And we actually, there was a lady that was there in the meetings with us and she came up afterwards. And she said that when she was like eight or nine years old, the Lord just reminded her of this encounter that she had. And uh, she was, you know, a little girl and she, she, there was this presence that came and sat on her bed and her parents were, um, you know, like spirit, spirit filled. So they prayed in the spirit and they started rebuking demons and the devil and all this stuff. Well, the Lord came to her in that meeting with us and told her, well, that was me, <laughs> that I was the one that came and sat on your bed. <laughs> so the Lord actually, you know, was able to redeem that moment with her and, um, and just, you know, the shift that needed to happen for her. So I would, I would encourage folks to, um, you know, start there with any, any, you know, either our parents or spiritual authority and just what, how the enemy may have used, or the enemy was able to usurp that authority to ultimately shut us down somehow or defile that gate somehow. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. Anybody else have another question, comment, whatever? Before we shut her down. All right. We're good. Everybody good? Well, guys, thank you. Go to their website, you know, uh, pitch in and bless them. Trade into their, uh, their ministry. Trade into this message tonight. It's, uh, hey, good evening, Terry. This is ahead. Joanna. Hi, everybody. Hi. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. 
Oh, okay. I just really praise God for this. Um, I had no idea it was going to come in uh, and hear of someone's book and the writings of her book. It was just fascinating. I didn't get the name of it. So if you can, you know, give that before we go, uh, I'd appreciate it. And, um, but just the, just the insight, I, I'm awakened by um, the mortality part that we were talking about, you know, I, it was just, it's like this uh, thought is provokes us that since we've seen so many people die, then we're all going to die. And then these scriptures keep coming back to me, just what Jesus spoke. He that believes on me shall never die. That never means never. I'm so encouraged by hearing the word of the Lord to die, to, not to die tonight. <laughs> and uh, it's just really fascinating to know. Um, it's more than fascinating. It's enlightening. It really, it, it seems like it's a, a, a revelation that gets us on course to God's intention on Absolutely. making us be transformed yeah. into Christ. Yeah. The other you know. scripture is, says, put on immortality. Yeah. Wear it like a cloak. Wear it like a garment. And so anything that comes against you that speaks death or destruction or stealing and killing and destroying, it's more about, it's not just about staying alive. It's about living from a, an eternal perspective where yes. you have authority over what you receive uh, what your thoughts are what your imagination what your intuition and things like that what we're talking about but when you put on immortality it's like it's almost like a shield against anything that comes to you uh, like i've stopped eating processed foods i've stopped eating sugar and uh, things like that because they it's the process of reaping and sowing that if i if just in our diet if I, if I sow death in there through processed foods or sugar, and the list can go on and on and on, I'm, I may likely reap uh, death. And so we have to understand how God is recalibrating our spirit, our soul, and our body. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. I'm glad to have heard it tonight. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Well, guys, uh, Sean, Virginia, why don't you pray and uh, we'll close here. And uh, sure, happy you guys had took some time out to be with us. This is amazing. I'm going to share it with everybody. And I'll post it tomorrow on uh, Facebook and you share it too. So uh, I think it's a key word. When I saw that word yesterday or the day before, what she put out there, I just shared it everywhere. And I thought, man, this is key. Uh, uh, to where we're going and what we're doing. And so thank you guys for your, your, uh, your stepping in, you know, and, and releasing the wisdom and the revelation, and the understanding that we need to go into a place where no eye is seen. Yeah. So thank you. Well, Amen. thank you so much, Terry. You are such a blessing. I love what you're doing. Bless you. It's yeah. an honor to, to be running with you on this amazing journey. Yeah. Thanks for having us definitely yeah hey amen it's fun it's quite a trip when you include barbecue yeah <laughs> there he goes again yeah. <laughs> everything guys is good with barbecue there's a few other things too <laughs> amen all right well i'll pray so father i just i just thank you for all that for this time tonight um father for just uh for keys father being released father just for an open heaven and just bless each and every one of us, Father, just for a higher height, a deeper depth, a wider width, and a wider breadth, Father, to open up. And Father, for us to just continue to say yes to you, Father, in the, in the times that we're living in and all that you're doing, Father, to have eyes to see and ears to hear, Father, to discern and to know where you're at and what you're doing, Father, and just to continue to walk in agreement and to continue to grow in our oneness with you. And so I just bless each and every one, Father, that's on here tonight and that will listen in the days to come. And just thank you, Father, just for meeting each one of us in that place of desire that's in our hearts, Father, to know you, Father, to want to interact, to experience, and to encounter you in the things of heaven, Father, and just in, in everything that we've been getting to hear, Father, from different people, and just the desire of our heart, Father, being fulfilled, and just to ultimately to know you, and to commune, and to be with you, Father, and so I just thank you again for all that you're doing, and just bless Terry, 
and just thank you for him and, and just for what's happening here in the state of Florida and just in each and every person where the cities and states that they're in and the nations that they're in. And so we just thank you, Father, for the nations. And we just thank you, Father, for just all that you're doing in the earth and for heaven invading earth in this day. In Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Love you and honor you. Amen. Take a little time out of your night and early thank morning, you. whatever, whatever. So we'll see you next thank week. You. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You will. All right, then. Good night. We'll, Good have, night. we'll have barbecue. Hello, everybody. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.